Welcome back to Before You Go. We are a lifestyle portal for those seeking support in the areas of mental health and wellness. Our goal is to help you reach financial and social emotional freedom. One of the pathways to emotional freedom is through understanding finances. So thanks again for joining us today for things I wish I knew before going to college. Before we get started, go ahead and like, share, subscribe, and follow. So today's segment is part of our financial wellness series. Be sure to check back soon for more on this important topic. So let's go ahead and get started. You know, when you're heading off to college, that can be an exciting time for families, especially if you're a first generation college student. And all that means is that you're the first in your immediate family to attend a university or college. Because you are the first to attend a university or college, you may have feelings of disconnection. You may not understand your finances and your financial obligations, and you could just feel like you don't belong. And all of that impacts your performance on campus. So today I'm going to teach you how to combat high financial strain, how to combat low financial self-efficacy, and that just means uh, your belief in your abilities. And thirdly, I'm going to help you create habits of financial wellness. Now, the great thing about college is that there are some definite perks, right? When you go to college, um, you get discounts and things at restaurants, movie theaters, cafes, maybe even concert venues, um, all types of places, especially in your college town, will offer you discounts with just your student ID. Uh, aside from the obvious benefits of college, you know, we are there to obtain our degrees. We're there for networking opportunities. You will probably meet some of your best friends in life at college or while you're attending college. Um, and you build a wealth of knowledge in all sorts of subject areas. Uh, so those are some of the perks of college. Uh, again, I mentioned if you're in college towns, you know, shopping, uh, coffee shops, all of that, you name it. You're just going to get tons of discounts and incentives. So enjoy it. Uh, it even kind of hits home when you talk about things like car insurance. If you keep your grades up in college and you do have a car and you are driving, you can let your insurance agent know and show them your grades and you will get incentives in that area, maybe even airfare too. And so with all this extra cash that you can rack up, you can use some of that money to pay for, say, a vacation to Mexico for spring break. Now, with all, being, all that being said, there are some pitfalls, and that's why we're here today, is to talk about the pitfalls so that you don't uh, get into some bad habits here. So again, if you've decided to attend a four-year college or university, again, you know there are perks, but be aware of the following pitfalls. You know, there was a recent Harvard study that compared continuing generation students. Those are students who are not the first to attend uh, in their families. They compared those continuing gen students to first gen students. And of course, they found that the first gen students had increased financial strain, lower financial knowledge and self-efficacy, excuse me, and lower optimism. Uh, it also showed that the traditional um, first-gen college students who attended four-year universities were significantly more likely than their continuing-gen counterparts to have to take out federal um, and private loans, uh, some scholarships, uh, some credit card use, and maybe even some money that they attained from maybe like a summer job or something. So just having to combine lots of resources to attempt to pay for college. Uh, first generation students were less likely than continuing jet students to use money from their parents as a source too. So that's what that study found. It, nothing, um, you know, that we didn't already know. Uh, in terms of the latest data, there is a study that is pretty recent. It was uh, done in December of 2021. And those stats show that uh, this organization called the Education Data Initiative, they talked about the differences between blacks and whites who attend colleges. And some of those important facts were black and African-American college graduates 
they end up owing on average about $25,000 more than their white uh, counterparts. That study also showed that 50% of all student loan debt is held by white or Caucasian borrowers. And it showed that Asian college graduates are the fastest to repay their loans and they earn a salary that typically exceeds their loan debt balance. So those are some quick uh, stats there, maybe a little disheartening, but after hearing those stats, let's look at some helpful tips to, again, help you avoid the pitfalls. So tip number one I have for you is to stick to a budget. I'll say it again, stick to a budget. You know, budgeting shows you where your money is being spent each month. Um, if you budget, you'll have maybe some money at the end of the month that you can use to kind of splurge a little better to go out with your friends. But just keep in mind, the less you spend, the more you'll have for later. And, um, you know, there are quite a few budgeting apps out there online. So just look up some of the budgeting apps and see which one you're comfortable with and start to learn how to budget before you get to college. If you have a savings and a, a checking account, then your bank probably has some really good budgeting um, tools in that app. And by the way, if you don't have a checking and a savings account, you probably need to open that up before you get to college or when you get to your college town, find the bank there. Okay, tip number two, manage your credit cards. I'll say it again, manage your credit cards, manage your future. Just remember that phrase. Now, one thing I always remember is if you cannot afford to pay off your credit card each month, you cannot afford the item. Charging unnecessary items creates a cycle of debt that you do not want to get yourself into. Credit cards for those with no or poor credit also have high interest rates, okay? Uh, on the flip side to that, if you do pay your bills on time, it creates a positive credit history and therefore a positive credit score. Tip number three, no late payments. Again, no late payments. Your credit rating will be all the more important when you graduate, when you're going to need reliable housing and transportation. It is critical that you don't make late payments because those late payments negatively impact your credit rating. A series of late payments can bring your score down by more than 20 points or more. And just know that it takes about six or seven years for derogatory marks to be removed from your credit, even if you pay the bill sometimes. Tip number four, create an emergency fund. Just know that when you're in college, anything can happen. You will need money for unexpected events and situations. Um, uh, for instance, if you take your car to school and the car breaks down, you're going to need some money, an emergency fund to fix it. If you have your laptop, say somewhere in a study area and somebody takes it, you're going to need an emergency fund to immediately get a new laptop. So always keep in mind, um, that you're just going to need a little bit of extra money. Now I'm sure the question out there is if I don't have any money, how do I create an, uh, an emergency fund? Well, some things that you can do. If you get cash gifts or cash apps for your birthday, for holidays, um, if people say, do you need anything? Say uh, cash app, right? Uh, so use all of that extra money for your emergency fund. Tip number five, don't borrow more than you will earn. Now this gets tricky because you got to figure out what your major is going to be and the earning potential of that area. Okay. So let's look at this loan repayment timeline. It shows the average amount of time it takes for some people to pay their loan debt back, right? Going from an associate's all the way to a doctoral degree. And yes, you are seeing correctly. Uh, it could take you anywhere from four years to 38 years. Uh, one here even says 46 years to pay this debt back. Uh, that is definitely something you don't want hanging over your head for the remaining part of your adult life, right? Uh, and the scenario I'm going to give you, when I talked about uh, figuring out what your major is going to be. If you select a major, say like uh, psychology, just know that the average salary for a person with a psychology degree and a bachelor's degree, you know, that average salary is only $50,000. And again, here looking at this timeline, if you've taken out 200 grand, say, 
in uh, loans, it's going to take you quite some time. You're going to be in your 50s before you're able to repay all of that money. And again, you know, it's kind of that vicious, vicious cycle, excuse me, that I talked about earlier that you're going to end up getting yourself into owing this much money. And so with all that being said, you know, there's always a mental health connection to the things that we talk about here before you go. And the mental health and debt connection is if you already suffer from a mental health issue, such as depression, anxiety, you know, other issues, getting in debt is only going to increase those worries and increase those symptoms. Okay. There was a study from the Royal College of Psychiatrists, and that study found that half of all adults with a debt problem also live with with what they called mental ill health, right? And the definition for that was anything ranging from feelings of anxiety and low mood to an actual diagnosis of a mental health condition. So those are important stats. You know, if you have a debt problem, up to half of those people, um, you know, experience some type of mental ill health. And that leads me into tip number six, know your triggers, right? Be proactive by knowing what triggers you. Realize that overspending and impulse buys can be a symptom of some sort of internal or emotional issue. Uh, And another thing, you know, with with these triggers and, and mental health, find out where that mental health support is on campus, right? Um, there's going to be psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, maybe even life coaches. There's going to be people there for you. So scope those people out before you get into crisis. So that was a quick uh, run through of some of the highlights and pitfalls of first generation students who may not know or understand their financial obligations uh, when they're heading to school. And so I guess this would be a good time to say that we are well on our way to financial freedom. We look forward to, you know, going through this series with you guys again. And if not on the topic of finance, we have other series on the topic of, you know, mental health, wellness, relaxation. There's so much more to come. So again, we appreciate you guys for tuning in and for joining us on the road to financial freedom.